hello everyone in today's tutorial i'm going to show you how to paint this beautiful purple and white lilac it has tiny bunch of flowers on a stem and it's going to be a bit challenging to paint them but i'm going to show you a very impressionistic way of painting them so there are two lilac trees in the open yard of my shared residence one is purple and uh, white as you can see here the purple is fully bloomed and it smells very fragrant i can smell it from the walking path just a few steps away as you can see here it's nicely bloomed and has a few purple color variations so i'm going to pick a few stalks of this lilac flower as a reference for my painting and here's the white lilac tree which is also fully bloomed but I noticed that the flower size is slightly smaller than the purple one and here it is in a small container and I'm just enjoying the fragrance well, I plan to demonstrate the painting uh, outdoors. Unfortunately, it's a very windy and cloudy day. So I have no choice but to settle down indoors as usual. Well, look at this beauty. Both the colors complement each other. So I am going to paint this on an A4 size Kenson cold press watercolor paper of 300 grams per square meter and it's slightly textured and I just love using Canson watercolor papers because they're quite affordable and this tag is about 30 sheets that I got for below 10 euros and they're very much good in quality and uh, before I start painting just observing the flowers on the bunch of lilacs and as I said, the white one is slightly smaller than the purple one. And the purple petals seem much firmer compared to the white one. So the white one looks uh, wilted as compared to the purple one. So if you have a ready-made purple palette as in Quina, Credon, Purple or Violet, you can use them. But in this demonstration or tutorial, I'm not going to use a ready-made purple. Just to help those who are beginners or those who have a basic palette on how to mix your own purple. As well as making variations in the purple tone grades as you make your color mixes. So basically, it's like learning your color mixes as well. So to kickstart, I have mixed an equal amount of permanent carmine. Or crimson with sapphire blue from Schmincker. You can use any blue of your choice, preferably on a darker side as in ultramarine blue. And the result is you will get a nice typical violet or purple. And with that color, I am dropping in some random petals like impression using my mop brush. And for some color variations, I have dropped in uh, more of the uh, permanent carmine. You can also put in a drop of the purple mixes into your carmine mix to arrive at a magenta-like color. Done applying the paint, I'm quickly using my spray bottle to spray some clean water onto the uh, paint. And I'm using a bigger size mop brush to just move those pigments with the help of the water that I sprayed. But if you don't have a water spray, you can just directly start using your damp brush to do these washes. And now I am using a wet tissue to just dab and lift out some pigment just to reveal some light areas on the flower. So I noticed there are some smaller bunches of flower and I'm gonna create an impression of the smaller branch so similar to the bigger bunch of flower that I did earlier I'm gonna just repeat the process by applying those paints 
followed by water spray and just giving it some light washes using the mop brush you can use a round brush as well there's no issue about it so for the next bunch painting i'm once again mixing the carmine and sapphire blue but this time with more of the sapphire blue to arrive at a darker purple i would say a bluish hint to this purple and quickly dabbing that creating impression of petals once again so basically as you increase the blue hint in your purple mix you will arrive at a darker violet or bluish tone purple and the second color that i'm going to add on to this bunch is more of the carmine mix so you get more of the magenta uh, purple tone so once again water spray followed by light washes with the mop brush or your round brush you don't have to worry too much of your brush movement as the water does the favor for you all right time to paint some stalks and leaves i'm using my olive green you can use any green of your choice and this olive green is olive green yellowish from schmincker i've put the um, code name on the screen in case you're interested i also have another olive green which is much brighter and i'll be using that color in the uh, tutorial later so just casually painting in the impression of stalks or stem of the lilac bunch using my rigger brush so in order to paint fine lines like this it's better to use a rigger brush and with the same brush i'm also painting in those leaves if you're comfortable using a round brush to paint your leaves go ahead i'm just trying to make full use of my rigger brush to paint some impression of leaves just loosely paint those leaves i'm not going to be very detailed and uh, as you saw just now i have sprayed with water once again and uh, giving it some washes to achieve that soft look and impressionistic uh, look and do make sure that your brush that you're using is damp and not fully soaked with water as you don't want too much of water sitting on the paper causing warps now it's time to paint the white bunch of lilac and based on my observation there are some overlapping leaves on the uh, flowers of this white lilac i'm going to kick start painting the leaves first using the same rigor brush and the same olive green mix And over here, you can see me mixing a little bit of permanent green olive that I mentioned earlier. And with a hint of yellow ochre to get a golden hint in the color mix. And dropping that randomly onto the paper. And I'm also dropping in just the yellow ochre alone just to create some color variations followed by water spray and just like the purple lilac i am just giving it some washes with the water that i sprayed using the damp mop brush so i noticed there's a woody stem or stalk attached to the bunch of lilac so i'm going to create the same impression of it by using some sophia with a little touch of uh, burnt sienna and painting that in using my rigor brush now using a damp brush to soften the edges of the stem 
So right now I am going to fill up the white background with an impression of flowers at the back. Kick starting with some water spray and using a mop brush to just roughly uh, wet the entire background. If you don't have water spray you can just use your uh, damp brush to wet the surface and quickly dropping in some light mix of the same color combination and as soon as you drop in those colors onto the wet surface as in wet in wet painting you achieve a soft or wash out look. So the painting is completely dry. Now it's time to add some details. I like how the uh, light areas have turned out to be. It looks more natural for this uh, impressionistic style. So I am going to add more stronger looking petals on the lilac. So I'm mixing the same purple mix which is carmine and uh, sapphire blue with more hint of the sapphire and it looks more darker this time. I would say it looks more of indigo and quickly going to paint an impression of flowers at random spots I'm not going to be close to each other. Well, you don't have to create impressions of perfect looking flower motifs and not necessarily in full shape. You can also make one or two strokes of petal because it's just an impression of uh, the flower petals picking out from the entire bunch and also making some color variations. So basically this entire process is a repetition of the first painting step that we did with lesser number of flower motifs. Now adding more carmine to get a magenta mix. So basically as I said earlier, the more blue that you add, you get a darker version of purple which has a bluish hint as in indigo. And the more lighter color that you add as in carmine or crimson, you get a pinkish or reddish purple tone. So just by playing with your color mix ratio, you arrive at various uh, tones of purple and you don't even have to buy extra purple tones. And as you just noticed, I once again used my water spray to move those pigment with my damp brush. Like I said, this is a repetition of the earlier process. So right now I am mixing some indigo. You can arrive at this color by adding some sapphire, black or a darker version of blue into your purple mix. I am just dropping that in as a dot to create an impression of the middle part of the flower which is the pistil. So repeat these steps for the second bunch of purple lilac. You can add other color variations to distinguish between the first bunch and this second bunch. And I have decided to use more of the carmine mix onto this lilac.
and second color is a brighter looking purple so basically this lilac is of lighter tone or brighter looking tone compared to the darker tone bunch And once again, for the pistil part, I'm dropping in a darker tone. Now, don't worry if the paper surface was still wet and you dropped in, it tends to bleed. It won't be that much of um, color bleeding because the paper is just damp and not fully wet. Otherwise, if you don't wish to have the bleeding to happen, just wait for the entire painting to dry and then drop in those dots. Now it's time to add details onto the white lilac and I'm making a mix of Sophia with yellow ochre to arrive at a golden brown hint. And just randomly dropping in the dots using that color mix to indicate the pistil part of the flower. And now with the clean damp brush, I am going to give washes of the dots that I placed earlier. As you make those light washes with the damp brush, you can notice that it starts to look like a light colored petal, which is perfect for a white colored uh, flower. And uh, in contrast to the colored ones, we applied the main colors first and then applied the dots. However, for a light colored petal as in white or off-white, we just need to rely on the color activation from the dots that I applied. So this is one way of painting white flowers. Try experimenting it with other types of flower petals. Now I'm adding more color variations of the dots. I'm using the green mix, which is the permanent olive green. And I'm going to repeat the same process. And remember to use a clean damp brush. Since this is a white colored flower, you don't want to stain them with other colors. Now I am going to repaint the leaves using the permanent green olive. Just painting over the existing uh, leaf motif casually without too much concern on the details because after this I am going to give it some washes with a clean damp brush. And now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm giving it washes with damp brush to give it a very loose impression. 
since this entire painting is about impressionistic painting, right? You can extend the light washes onto the other parts of paper to fill up all those empty areas. Next, in order to make the white lilac look brighter, I'm going to fill up those empty areas with more colours, mainly the green mix. And uh, I have also added some Sophia onto the green mix to have some colour variations. Once again, light washes of the pigments that I applied to get that loose uh, washout effect. little bit of splatter here and there to add fun to the look of this painting. Alright, now it's time for some fine-tuned details and I'm using a rigger brush to add in more of unopened flowers or flower buds to the top of the lilac. Extending that color mix to other parts of the lilac, just painting one or two flower blooms. Now you can skip this totally if you don't wish to. Just thought of adding some dark areas to this lilac bunch. Filling in some gaps here and there. Like I said, I'd like to create some dark areas on the flower, as in shadow. And once again, softening the edges of those dark areas that I painted using a clean damp brush. It's a rule of thumb when you're working with watercolors. Always learn to soften the hard edges. Time to fine tune the white lilac. I'm using a much smaller brush which is my script brush and with the permanent green olive I'm just lightly painting some impression of the little stems. Once again, softening the paint with a clean damp brush. Next, I am going to repaint the woody stem. And this time, this is just a mix of Sophia alone. Next, I am going to paint some veins on the leaf motifs using a darker green mix.
And as for finishing touches, I have decided to use some white gouache to apply some highlights onto some of the flower motifs. You can skip this if you don't want to. As I said, I'd like to experiment on my paintings. So a little bit of white gouache onto those purple lilacs here and there. And uh, as for the white lilac, since it is already a white flower, I thought I'll extend more of the white gouache. Remember the splatter paints that I made earlier? It has fully dried, so I thought of reactivating it by using a wet brush to give it some washes and make it look like some loose petals. Alright, with this, the painting is complete. How do you like the look of it? I like the white lilac especially looks much brighter with the technique that I showed you. Hope you can paint the same way. And I like the fact that the green shade on the white lilac looks like an overlapping leaf or shadow from the leaves. So if you liked my tutorial, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. And thank you for those who are already my subscribers. Hope you'll attempt to make this painting. See you again in my next video. Bye.